how's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Future Static with us tonight, and they can say their names and what they do in the band. Um, Hi, I, oh, you go. <laughs> oh, you go. I'm, I'm Raya from Future Static Vocalist. I'm, I'm Kira. I'm the bassist. There we go. Well, guys, listen. This band, I did three reaction videos. You can check the links in the description. You're going to be blown away. I just want to preface that if you have not checked out this band, this is the time now. Right now, you're going to watch this entire interview, and then you're going to be like... You're right, Brandon. I should be on the future static boat right now. And you're right. So uh, I I was telling them earlier before I did the reaction videos. And if you can tell, I'm just sweating right now because I was going so hard in these reaction videos that I was like, I wonder what time it is. And I looked at my watch and it was eight o'clock and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to hop on now. This is it's right now. So yeah. go check them out. I will also be doing a live stream of their new album. I'm not going to try to pronunciate it because I'm notoriously bad at pronunciating names. I think it's, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to do it. I'll do it. I'll try to do it. <laughs> I'll try to do it later. But I wanted to know uh, how Future Static started out. I am such a nerd about most things, but music is one of those things that I'm a super huge nerd for. Um, but I wanted to know how you guys started out because I don't really know too much history about how the group formed. So Feel free to spare, spare no expense. I literally just do this for free so and for, for fun. So take all the time you want. Tell me what, what the, the origin story is. Uh, so so we've, been, we've been going for oh, seven years now, I think, something like that. Wow. Um, so, so me and the other guitarist, Ryan, uh, uh, one of our guitarists, Ryan, um, uh, the only original members left, um, it started with me and our old lead singer, Bree, um, we were friends in high school wow. and we, we started just like fiddling around with music, thought, hey, it would be cool to start a band. Um, and Brian had done, I think, like drama classes with her in high school or something. So we, we found him and then we found our old drummer, Shay, was a couple of years ahead of Bree and I at high school. And um, I remember she did a, I think it was like a, a talent show or something at school where she drummed blindfolded is super cool what so we're like oh, we'll, we'll we'll try and we'll tap her on the shoulder we'll see if she's interested so we, we kind of started we were kind of like pop punky like butt rocky kind of a thing <laughs> kind of figuring out our sound um we dropped our first ep in 2018 and then um we started getting a bit bit heavier for our second ep um in and that came out um in 2020 um and just before that um, so our, our old drummer Shay, she was also, she just graduated and become like a midwife and a nurse. And so like, Aww. that's like a, a real life job that sure. you kind of, at that point you have to pick if you want to do like the full band thing or the, and like, she's incredible. She's like meant to be doing something like that. So I'm very, very happy for her that she's like making that her career. Um, and so we got, uh, Jack, who's, um, our, yeah, our now guitarist, um, cause we really needed a second guitarist. Um, and Jackson, um, who are both in another Melbourne band, Loose End, that we'd made friends with, who were like, well, we, we played them the, the second EP before it was released, and they were like, that's really cool. We, we'd love to be part of that. And we were like, yes, please. Yes, please. Um, and then we ended up releasing that EP just after lockdown started. Um, oh. Ray left. She wanted to, like, do something else. Um, and we had Amy message me, like, two weeks later saying hey just like can i it just if you're if you're, if you're auditioning people if you if you're interested can you like just want to put my name on the list and we we, we took some time because like there was we were melbourne had like some of the strictest lockdowns like we were yeah. stuck but we didn't have any shows to play and then when we finally organized a show we're like oh yeah we'll, we'll bring her in we'll give her a go and it was like we're not letting her leave she can't go anywhere she's staying right here it was set. It was set in stone. It's like that first rehearsal. I was like, "Oh my god!" Because yeah, I was I, re I was hanging out a lot with Jack and Jackson, and I kind of saw them go through the process of joining Future Static. And when I heard that the demos, I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" I wish I was singing this stuff. Like this music is so good. And I was like, as soon as Brie left, I actually had to like wait. I was like, "Oh, is it too soon to like?" You know, it's kind of like, you know, if, you know, the person you like breaks up with their partner, you're like, how long do you wait? 
and really awesome. <laughs> um, like, I was like, I definitely went too soon, but yeah. And then, it yeah. Was you were, you were top of the list anyway, so it was all good. I was, like, I was like, oh my God, Jack and Jackson. And, and I was also really good friends with Ryan at the time. We were, we were hanging out heaps all together. And I was like, please let me. Let me <laughs> It finally happened. I was so stoked. I was like, oh my God, this is my dream come true. And yeah, it, it still it still is that <laughs> to this day. Like almost three years later, I'm yeah, I'm like, this is a dream come true being with these people doing this. Oh my <laughs> God. That's that's crazy. And had you had you been in a band before this, or was this the is this your first group that you've been a part of? Um yeah, so I I kind of Dabble. The first band I was ever in, I was actually the bassist, not the singer as well. I was like, I did a few singing things here and there. Um, I, I'd always been singing. And then I was also um, briefly in a band, but they just lived too far away. And, and it only lasted a couple months. We didn't even play a show. And then I was also in a progressive metal band as the vocalist. So that was probably hmm. the first one I did a few shows in. But like they also kind of had, you know, they were a bit older, had like kids and like wives and stuff. And so they didn't really want to do the whole touring thing or make it like a, yeah. And we just never ended up even recording the music that we played. Aww. which sucked. So I, I just like, I was always looking for like a band that actually wanted to do it a bit more like professionally. Full time, yeah. Like, yeah. Full time. And yeah. So this is probably the first band I'm, I've been in that has actually recorded music. <laughs> this is going to be like, like the first time I have like professionally recorded like like music that I've gotten to help write and stuff like that. So it is definitely the first, yeah, the first more accomplished band I've been a part of for sure. Yeah, yeah, I I love that you guys have been doing it. Uh, obviously, you know, Future Sag has been doing it for a long time, and it seems like again, just listening to the current three singles, I was like, I was like, okay, I listened to the Gasolina cover, and I was like, what could they do? Because I feel like the cover, you're like, you have b barriers of where you can go, like you know, you're like, they can only take it so far before it just doesn't become the song anymore. And I feel like you guys like met it at the gate. You know, you were like, we would push it just far enough where like, it's still us, but like, it's still the song as well. So I, it was really exciting for me to check out all three of them and record myself because normally I just like, kind of like, depending upon however much time I have, I like to try to like, listen to all this stuff in advance. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have them on. And I was like, I got home late and I was like, let me, let me hop on and do three in a row. So I wind up listening to them all back to back to back and I just felt like listening to the, all three of the singles gave me that, like, that energy. Like, at first song, I was like, okay, this is good. And then I got into Road Queen, and I was like, this is better. This is crazy. <laughs> and then I got to the, I got to the newest one, Chemical Lobotomy, and I was like, I, I don't know how this, I don't know how I did not find out about this band or check them out sooner because my head hurt after. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I think I, in the video, I even said that I was like, my brain was going through like overload because I was just like, holy shit, there's so much stuff going on with this song that I would love to sit down and like break it down for like 20 minutes, but I have like, 10 minutes to like try to conceal all of my thoughts into like a congruent sentence so i think i did a pretty good job all things considered but i i felt like i was gonna have a stroke if i'm gonna be honest i by the end of it i was just like i'm just gonna stop talking i'm just gonna work i'm going to the next i'm going to do the interview now so like if this made any sense let me know in the comments but i i i was legitimately so stoked and i was like i hope they have vinyl so now i know that they have vinyl so now i can like have it in my collection and be like holy shit i found out about this band when they were like not as big here in the states so jump on the train now i'm telling you guys this is this is the time this is the time they're gonna be big uh and i have to say and i'll say it on here because by the time this comes out the reaction videos will be out but i have to say that chemical lobotomy what is my favorite song of this year 
high hands down like it it was so oh it's 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 intense in like the best way possible and i feel like to me the three bands that you guys remind me a lot of right now uh are dying wish counterparts and oh, I, would, and I would and i would throw uh capstan in the mix because i think there's like a little pop punk like they do a little bit of like pretty much everything and i think you guys tackle that all very well there may be like some outlier brand i can think of but i would say those three specifically if you like any three of those bands or all three of the those bands like myself this is this band needs to be on your radar that's all i'm going to tell you that's it that's all i need to tell you go check out the songs and ha- come hang out and listen to the album with me for the love of god it's gonna be sick um but how is how is i feel like how has the reception been for you guys because i you know i can keep talking about how good the songs are but how how has the reception been on your end and how, how have the songs been received yeah like, yeah it's been really good really exciting um we we're really lucky we um we, we've just gotten off the back of our first ever European tour, which oh. was crazy. Um, mm-hmm. But like, obviously, no, nobody knows who we are over there. We're, <laughs> we're still like working our way through Australia. Um, and so we had the, the response because our, our set at this point is like mostly new songs, which is super exciting. Um, and the, the response every time was like, I've never heard of you in my life, but I had so much fun. I'm going to buy a t-shirt. And I was like, that's exactly what we want. The, the good first impression. That's what we're aiming for with this yeah. album. And we seem to be doing it, which is really nice. It was, it was actually, yeah, incredible. Like, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, each each single has kind of brought more and more attention to the to ourselves, I guess. Like, um, I just remember, like, a lot of people say that Chemical Lobotomy is their favourite song live. We've been playing it for like, how long? Like, over a year over a year Ooh. now we've been playing it live for over a year and it's only yeah as you know just came come out um and a lot of people have said like what was that song and I was like oh it's not out yet <laughs> I'm sorry so like they, I know a lot of people were really looking forward for our music to come out since f- from our live shows so the reception's been like incredibly good because of that which is really awesome really yeah. good who'd you guys go out with uh in Europe if you don't mind uh we, we were with the Omnipic oh my god i had toby on shout outs to toby i've had toby on love that dude i know they were in the states so shout yeah. outs toby but yeah hey toby. <laughs> toby's the homie i still have to i still have to give him i didn't give him this and now i feel bad oh i dropped it. <laughs> toby i still have to give this to you this is yours so you can have it <laughs> i'm a little luigi okay he well so he was like he was like he was like, yeah, he's like, no one does any Luigi stuff. And I was like, oh, let me get this for you. And then I like pulled it out from underneath my desk. And he was like, he was like, oh, man, he's like, I like that. And I was like, you can have it when you come to the States. And then he and then I totally like I totally yeah. f- was busy doing something the day that they came to play Philly. And I was like, no, I was like, now nah, you got to come back. So either that or I got to <laughs> mail it to you. And that's going to take like seven years to get to you. So. <laughs> we'll figure it out hopefully not but i would love to see the omnific again Chow's toby mm. but i that that must have been an interesting that must have been an interesting like show experience because the omnific is like an instrumental band and you guys obviously have singing so i'm sure the experience uh, I, I assume the experience was good because people enjoyed the the music but i often find that like instrumental bands at touring with like bands that sing can be a little bit odd do you feel like the did you feel like you had to like work for their like affection almost because you're like oh man they're coming to see the omnific they're like they love like the they love the like mm-hmm. instrumental music uh do you uh, feel like you had to work uh, a little bit harder for that or was it pretty easy yeah. I feel like yeah Jack and Ryan and Jackson and Kira are just like such good instrumentalists that like you know, if somebody wanted to focus on that and that's what they came for, they could. And it's still amazing. Like if, if we, if we stripped all the vocals away from the album, it would still be like probably an amazing album without me. Like it's like the instrumentals that happen behind everything are crazy. So I, I, yeah, I felt like as well, I mean, the omnific are pretty intense. Like they're so good. They are. I, I, yeah. really good. I was just so scared. Like as a bassist, that like there were people who were bass fans coming up, and I was like, oh, if I can't, like, like I was asking the boys, I was asking the boys, can, can you give me some lessons? Can you like help me out? Because like when we're on the road, please. Because oh, so intimidating, but they're like so good. So oh. Good. 
Well, that's it good. Was, yeah, it was I'm, yeah, I, because I'm glad they're different enough. But, oh. Yeah, to be good. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. I was like, I was like, I know there's like a tiny bit of latency, so I was like, I gotta make sure I'm good. But yeah, I think you guys, I yeah, instrumentally, that's also what I talked about in like the videos was like, I think you guys find this great line of being like really technical in some spots and then like really knowing how to like open up and have more of an expansive like sound like the hourglass was the first song that i listened to um post gasolina and i was like what are they gonna give me like what are what type of vibes are they gonna give me and i was like this is a little post hardcore it's a little metal core it's a little punk here and there like there was really a great mix and i think the testament of what your band does is hit the gray area super well. Like, I think you're just like, we are music. Let's just give you everything. Right. And I, I love the fact that you don't specifically say like you're a post hardcore band or you're a metal core band, or you're like a pop punk band or whatever. I just like the fact that it's just like this really like androgynous like sound, which is so cool because I think bands really have found out that like, you can just do anything and people are going to be like, fuck yeah let's go like that's so sick so i feel like you guys hit that gray area super well so i wanted to comment on just how how much fun i've been having with all the singles and uh i'm gonna try singing it's lim liminality is that correct yeah. oh yeah that's it let's go <laughs> i'm definitely gonna fuck it up later but uh i i'm very excited to listen to it by the time this comes out i believe the album will be out so you can check the links in the description go pick it up go pre-order it like me and wait for that vinyl for like two years because i hope it's not going to take two years to get to me but who knows never know <laughs> fingers crossed i'm gonna i gonna hope that it doesn't take too long but i've waited i've waited for i'm like that titanic meme where i've like i've been waiting 84 years except for me it's i'm old and i have my vinyl collection so shout out to that movie but Wanted to know, uh, for Future Static, for people who aren't familiar with your band, but unlike me, uh, what song would you recommend to a new listener to check out first to give them an idea of your sound and what you guys do? Mm, that's hard. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I feel like you'd have to, I mean, the first single we ever brought out, which was Waves, that one's a, probably a really good one to get one of the general vibes. And then I think Roach Queen and Hourglass are the other two. Like, there's probably, yeah, there's probably three general vibes. Okay. Four. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's a hard question. I was I was going to say Waves as well. I think it's a big, like, that, yeah, that was the first one we dropped with Ami. And so that was kind of us trying to, like, kick people in the face and say hey this is like this is new future static like you've never heard it before i think that kind of is a solid representation of us it's got heavy it's got the emotional it's got the harmonies it's got the like hectic leads everywhere and it's got like just like the fast pace like kick you in the face very similar to chemical lobotomy as well i think um yeah, yeah it's it's yeah, yeah. And we, we also stuck Ami in a fish tank for the, the music video. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's got, we got to make that worthwhile. We, we got to make it worthwhile. Tuna, we gotta I was make in that tank for two hours in the middle of winter and the water was cold. If it wasn't for Jackson and Kira, like boiling kettles to make it just a little bit more bearable, like I would have been a block of ice in that tank. <laughs> so yeah oh my god now i'm gonna have to now i'm gonna have to do a video of that one just so i can <laughs> so i can help you guys get a little bit extra on the the <laughs> army freezing in the, the water <laughs> it was so much fun though by the end of it i was like oh it's colder outside than it is in the tank so i'm just gonna stay in here like for as long as i can <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. I always put myself in like in wet cold <laughs> situations like Venonosa did that as well. It's like the shower scene. I don't know if you've seen that one, but I have not. Yeah. No. And then I get buried in hourglass. Yeah, you do get and buried in hourglass. The only time I mean I had to drink like oh like uh what is it called? Um spoiler alert. Uh yeah, black black and green food dye and water for chemical lobotomy. That was oh. the worst part. Oh it was, it was water and food dye. But like that was like that was probably the most the, the least um yeah physically harsh music video. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need like, to roach queen I have to get roaches all over me. Oh yeah. Um, we need to do a music video where you're just like lying in bed and, <laughs> and we just speak. Yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna put my Udi on. Yeah. And I'm yeah. 
Yeah, a bowl of snacks. Chuck, He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if, yeah, if I'm not getting like yeah physically abused from temperatures <laughs> and like harsh temperatures and having like cockroaches on me, like it's not it's not worth filming. <laughs> I feel like you guys now have to do like a music video where you all are like watching a movie on the couch like together and it's the heaviest song that you guys have ever made. I think that would be so funny. Just like it's like the anti music video. You know, I feel like that would be so sick. It'd be yeah, like you're just it. like you're just like eating popcorn. You're like part was sick. I like that part. And then it's just like the heaviest, gnarliest track. And you're like, they're just sitting there. They're just on the couch, just sitting there watching a movie. That's crazy. That could be good. That could be really cool. And then you just Maybe like just sign off. That You're that just like, bye, guys. Happen. See you later. And yeah. then it's just like the heaviest, well, gnarliest breakdown. We, we've got one track on the the, the the album will be out by the yes. time, so we can talk about it. Um, we've got we've got one track that's like two and a bit minutes. It's just mm-hmm. like so hard. It's got um our friend uh, Luke. Taylor, who's the vocalist for an Adelaide band called Heartline, who are also very cool, Ooh, and you guys should okay. check out. All right, um, featuring on that one. So yeah, if we just got like Heartline round for a sleepover sometime, <laughs> and just yeah. it. well, they're coming to my house on Sunday. Yeah. Like, oh my god. They're playing a show on Sunday, and I, um, they needed a place to stay, so I was like, yeah, come stay with me. It's cool because we stay with them when we go to Adelaide, and they Aww. stay with them. So, so we kind of have this little. Yeah, so like maybe we could film it then. <laughs> They're sitting on the couch, like, and then me and him just like, like smiling, like pretending to have a conversation because it's like a back and forth, like, scre- like really heavy screams. Oh my god! And it doesn't stop, like it's like screaming the entire time. It's like in your face. This track, like, I can't wait till till that one comes out because it's just like the heaviest, most annoying thing. If you thought, if you thought Chemical Bottomy was like. Yeah, it was anxiety-inducing. Like, wait till we hear the Iliad. <laughs> I feel like that one and Roach Queen, I feel like Roach Queen, mm. I, I watched, and I was like, I could feel stuff on my body, even though I know nothing was there, and that freaked yeah. me the fuck out. Um, mm. And then I immediately looked at my bed and was like, okay, cool, there's no roaches on my bed. All right, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> um, but I was, that was heavy. So I was like, I'm like, are they going to go heavier? Like, because I always love figuring out in terms of the singles, like where the barometer at is at for, and I didn't know if whether or not you had an EP coming out or an album. And now that I know it's an album, I know that there's like way more depth that you guys are going to go through. But I was like, they, I don't think they could go heavier, right? I don't, there's no way they wouldn't yeah, do I think, that, I think, right? I think Rich Queen's like second heaviest. I think that's one step down from Iliad, do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say it's one step down from Iliad. <laughs> All right, well, I'm ready for Iliad, so I can just, like, absolutely throw hands in my room. Hopefully my cat will not, my cat will show up, and I'll pick him up, and we'll we'll have a mosh pit in my room. I love that, dude. Shout out to Meatball, my, my son. Meatball! Yeah. I'll I'll show you guys a photo after. He is, he is a 25-pound unit. He is... A big, big dude, big dude. He's like he's. I attribute to him if he was a human. He's like one of those like big guys in the pit, like that. Just like you know, like if you look at him the wrong way, he's gonna fuck you up. You know, that's why I get. He is the crowd killer. killer, Yeah, I should make I should make a merch line where he's just like a bulked out cat, and then I'll I'll do it. That'd be kind of sick. Let me know, guys. I should do that. I'll do it. Um, but the next question I have for you guys is, uh, what was kind of the first like artist or band that you uh, really got introduced into music? Like really, you saw them and you're like, I want to do music. Music's like the thing that I want to do because I am most hyped about this now. Is is there any groups or artists that come to mind that you're like, that's it? You get Kira? Um, or do you? I don't know. I, my, my first like 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 seeing bands live like my first like proper introduction to that was um i don't know if you've heard of soundwave which was a, a festival in australia for a while no i'm not um, familiar no yeah so I, I jumped straight in at 18 like seeing like like a full festival i think maybe uh, so it was if it wasn't slipknot it was someone like slipknot was headlining but i wasn't really there for them i was there for like fallout boy was there all time low was there ah. Broadway was doing solo mm-hmm. stuff i think like I think 
escape the fate was there with Ronnie Radke, I want to say. Like, the one time he, like, managed to cross the border and get to Australia. <laughs> um, but I think maybe maybe Fall Out Boy at that festival was like, oh, I could, I could, I could do a Pete Wentz. I could absolutely, like, see myself living that life. Same. Yeah. How about you, Amy? Um, mm, it's hard because I, I, I think um, I'd have to say my mum. <laughs> yeah wow yeah. Yeah. my my mom's an opera singer and um she kind of started her career like maybe like a little bit after i was born so she started training and stuff so i kind of watched her and my wow. dad's a conductor so i watched them both like perform and do that like my whole life i was just like watching my mom like die on stage for like every night or pretend to kill herself because her like love interest didn't want her or something like and she was like it was just such a like I just yeah just always loved watching her do that and yeah it was just an amazing thing so I'd have to say like definitely my mom but if we're talking bands ah oh, man I'd have to say carnival wow um, played, yeah played um like unify is a really big festival as well that um yeah that happened <laughs> Well, that used to have, I really hope it comes back. Please, Lord, come back, Unify. We need you. Um, but yeah, I watched Carnival headline. I think it was 2019. Ooh, okay. Um, and that was kind of when I said, nah, I have to do this. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I was, I was a hairdresser for a long time and I ah. kind of just like music as like a bit more of a hobby. And I was like, you know what? I'm happy with that life, like being a hairdresser. Like, that's fine. Like, Music can just be my hobby, but I think, yeah, being kind of all live, I was just like, oh, my God. No, I think I have to start looking looking for this. Like, this has to be my – I have to play this stage one day. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that because I, I always get very curious. Like, I I would agree. Kira, I love Fall Out Boy. Shout outs. Would love to have them on the show at some point. Maybe I'll get big enough to do that someday you know manifesting that um but i and i'll ask kira to come on i'll just be like kira all right time to come full circle let's go um yes, yes. bring you on the show again um Hello. but I, I i love asking bands like where they get to start at because especially like for myself like i started doing this because like music has always been a large part of my life so like i love being able to highlight scenes from all across the world so it's really sick that you guys got into it and that it's obviously a really important factor of your life to you know dedicate a lot of time and effort to doing it so very very sick um i wanted to ask as well as you both being women in the scene as well you know how has that been for you guys to like highlight your skills because i feel like oftentimes especially women in the scene are like you know, I feel like we're they're on the rise, which is amazing, and I love to see it. And I'm all I'm here for it. You know, I'm I'm championing that shit. But um, you know, how does it feel for you guys to be? You know, have you had any show experiences where people have come up to you? Um, obviously, more specifically, women that have come up to you and been like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! I didn't think I could do this. This is like so sick." Have you guys each had individual like moments or something you can think of that that happened that you were like? damn my feels I, I'm really in my feels right now I'm, I'm you know mm, yeah I've, I've had it a few times um it's really it's really nice like it's really nice to like yeah to to be one of the people that that you know gave somebody the I don't know the the will or the the confidence to to go out and start screaming especially like yeah um yeah female screamers are definitely more of a thing now i got really lucky like that we're starting this now and i didn't have to go through like what say courtney laplante had to go through or like emmy from red hook as well like yeah. just being a female like fronting a rock band like yeah she started way before um like we are doing this they're much bigger and yeah she's gone through things that yeah and that yeah, that I'm glad I haven't had to go through. Um, and I think, yeah, she's just like a really supportive person, Emmy. And I hope to do that and be like that as well. Yeah. Like she always gets people to come up and and do fun things and like always gives them a shout out. And she's helped me put like our band as well, me personally in the band a lot. And it's nice when people 
yeah, come up and feel like I'm doing the same for them. Like, I'm just like, yes, it's just like a, just you give and you like get, and it's just like a full circle of, of support like nowadays, which is great. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's especially special for us. Like, like it's, it's a, a one in, one in 10, one in 20 or whatever yeah. in heavy music that you get even like one woman in a band. Mm -hmm. And so like to, to be able to do this with Amy, to have like two voices like on stage as musicians, like being able to like harmonize together, but also just like two women as part of the team to like have that that special kind of friendship um, mm -hmm. is, is really important. Like there's there's like a few bands around that kind of have that, like we have the, the beautiful monument in Australia. Yes. It's, like, it's like mostly women who are like incredible. I love them so much. Yeah. Um, but it is definitely like a, a, a token thing. And so to like be able to be like in it with Amy to be like, Aww. like to be like doing this stuff and like kind of showing women that you can do like the heavy music thing is, is super cool and super special. Aww. Like we're not just making music where like hopefully making an impact um, like, like as ha so many amazing women have done before us. Like, like Amy said with Emmy, um, I, was, I was thinking about like Jenna from Tonight Alive. Yeah. She's doing like oh. a huge thing at the moment, but like Jenna was like a, another one that I saw at that first sound wave, a huge inspiration. I was like, mm -hmm. so cool that there's just more and more of us coming through and, and doing cool stuff and proving that like, we're just as good, like if, if not better than like you, you so many better. better than it's, it's getting normalized now, which is good. Yeah. It's like, I'm I remember, like, I only heard once for when I was in, when I did a show, after I did a show with another band, somebody was just like, oh, I just don't know, girls screaming sounds weird. And I was like, well, that's because you don't hear it. Yeah. Like, it's not there. Like, just listen to it more. Like, screaming is weird when you first hear it too. Like, of course it is. <laughs> like, and it's just, it's just one of those things. Like, now it's becoming more normalised. I've never heard that ever again, like, in my career as a female screamer like it has nobody's out, has ever come up to me saying that ever and it's so good I'm like thank goodness <laughs> when box came out oh and yeah thank you for me yes like we set the she set the path she's like cleared the way for yeah for us it's wonderful they're crushing it right now too so shout outs to spirit box uh Love their yeah. music. I'm, and, uh, I'm gonna shout out Ginger as well. Ginger <laughs> is yeah, OG, OG. They're they're the yeah. pioneers, you know. So yeah, shout big shout outs to Ginger as well. Um, but yeah, no, I and I think that was also another reason on top of already the reasons that I love Future Static already. I was like, it's important for me as like someone who's a POC that I love to highlight people that are not you know, in that space as well. Like, I'd love to be able to highlight women more. I'd like to be able to highlight, you know, LGBTQ. Like, this is this is a really important thing. And I know it's made me feel welcomed to be a part of this scene. So I would want other people to feel welcome when they are wherever their scene is at. Like, you know, you would want people to respect where you come from and just accept you for, you know, if you are a female in the heavier music scene or if you are you know a gay person in the, in the heavier scene you would want them to respect you just as much as someone who's been you know doing it for a while uh, i had the pleasure of interviewing emmy um from red hook not too long ago as well so beautiful monument had been on uh, probably like four or five years ago they were like one of the first australian bands that i think i had ever interviewed um so very sick that's an og if you want to go look, it's, I have a lot of videos. So if you want to go back and look, go on ahead. It's probably still no there, but it was great. Um, Lizzie, if you watch this, come back on the show. I'd love to have you come back on. I don't, I'll shout out from the rooftops, you know, from the U S over here. It'll take a little bit while, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, no, it's great. And I love what you guys are doing. So if I, you know, again, if I can be somebody else that helps, you know, have you come over to the States I'll do it. Oh. You know, I will, I will die on that hill for sure. So, I mean, you guys made it to Europe. So the yeah, next, yeah. The next the, place the US is definitely like our, our next goal for sure. It's the next spot. Sure. So would love, would love to see future static in the States. Um, but I have to ask guys, the next question is, um, what are you jamming more currently? What are you listening to now? What's, what's on the Spotify? What have you guys been spinning uh, lately? Mm -hmm. Um, um, I mean, well, you go. 
Um, I've been spending a lot of movements recently. I've only I've only just gotten into that last album that they dropped, um, but it's very very cool yeah. and a bit a bit more like old school Rocky. I've been really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. That's a good pick. Yeah, um, I've yeah I've probably just been listening to Vola a lot. I'm back on my prog Ooh, train again. Okay. <laughs> Like I kind of like yeah I always kind of fall back into it and yeah I I got really yeah ever since they they released um Witness their last album which I absolutely love like I've just been hooked on it and I listen to it whenever I just whenever I can't think of anything else to listen to or whenever I need to feel good or just need something to pump me it's just like always that like I just fall back on that album at the moment. And um, yeah, I can't believe we're gonna play with them at Radar Festival next year. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've always wanted to see them live, and I thought that would never happen. Not only that, we're playing at the same festival. What? So, so, yeah, I'm so stoked. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. Vola, oh. uh, incredible. I can't wait to see them live. Um, but yeah, that's probably the one I've been listening to lately. Yeah. Whew. Well, that is that is manifestation if I've ever heard it. So that that's amazing. That's so sick. I'm I'm so stoked for you guys. That's awesome. And also, I've heard a lot of great things about Radar Fest, but I have not been. So you know, if if somebody's watching this that you know works for Radar Fest, you know, this guy this guy would love to come over and do some stuff. So I don't know if that's possible, but that'd be really sick. And I probably would cry for sure. So <laughs> would be really sick. Maybe one day. Well, well I'm going to manifest doing, I would love to go to Australia and do some of the Australian like circuit press. That would be amazing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping yeah. fingers crossed. This is, this is this year or next year probably is what it seems more likely. But the next question I have for you guys is obviously I found out about you guys through Gasolina. So I'll leave a link down below. If you haven't given that a listen, if you're a Gasolina fan, boy do i have a treat for you that song is that song is hot it's a good one so you should check that out but if you guys had to pick a new song to cover what would it be oh I've, I've been wanting for a while and i don't know that like we'd make the instrumental work very well this is mostly like self-indulgent because i want to <laughs> sing it with amy but i want to do dreams by the cranberries Oh, I think that would be so pretty. Right. Yeah, we'll make it static somehow. Yeah, I think that could work. I can, I can vision it. Yeah, that would be amazing. I'd love to do those harmonies with you. Yeah. Actually, we should, we should get working on that. Yeah. I'm sure we can make it work. It would yeah. sit. <laughs> yeah. Cooking up. Um. Yeah. What would? I don't know what I'd cover. Every time I hear a song that I like, I'm just like, I want to cover that. It's like a million different songs. But I can't really think of one. Mm. Ah, the, I don't know. I think of them all the time and then I just forget. Like, which one. I'll be like, you know what? That'd be really... Actually, no. All of Lady Gaga's discography. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, yeah. Version, especially, like, um, G-U-Y. Like, you know, that one. Oh, that one would be like it even has a breakdown at the end. Dun, 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 dun. That would that would be yeah no that would be a riff and a half in yeah. metal. I reckon yeah I'm gonna have to do that. We're gonna Ooh. have to do that one then. Yeah. Okay. I feel like if I had to if I had to throw my hat in the rink, if I had to if I had to manifest a song, I feel like it would be interesting to see your collective take on like a girls group like from the '90s. Like, I feel like that would be kind of sick. Like, maybe I'm thinking, like, hmm, I don't know. I want to say... Well, I, I was gonna... Oh, I was going to like, the, the bit in Hourglass, the, um, these holes were made for me with, like, all the harmony layers and stuff. Yes. That always felt very, like, like TLC, kind of Destiny's Child kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm a survivor. I'm not yeah. going to Yeah. 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 That, that was a good one. Oh, that yeah. Let's do let's do yeah. Survivor, Disney's Child. That'd be hard. I would I would respect I would respect you immensely for that. So I think that would be my choice. If not, I feel like um, oh man, I feel like I had a good one. Now I lost it. Um, oh. man, if I think of it, I'll come back to it and just yeah, throw it up on the screen. It, yeah. But if you guys have a recommendation for future static, you can also drop it in the comments. I can't guarantee that these ladies would do it, but, you know, a polite suggestion goes a long way. So 
who knows? Maybe they might do it. Yeah, so. I'm I'm very very anal. Anytime we release anything <laughs> of like checking YouTube comments, like always. So I will come back. Oh, it. okay. Yeah, Kira's gonna yeah. be on it. I she'll probably be faster than me to get on it. <laughs> and I have so that on good. my phone, you know. So, um, next question, mm-hmm. ladies, uh, is what is your favorite food to eat? What's your go to? Ooh, hummus and crackers. <laughs> That it's is my any specific back. hummus, Ami. Hummus and falafel, like I just yeah. Okay. So like, okay. I like anything made of chickpeas. Is just yeah. So it's probably my favorite thing to have. Yeah. Um. Oh, I've been, I've been so so I'm house sitting for our um our, our guitarist Jack. He he and his partner are away at the moment. Uh. Um. And so like. I'm not used to like living by myself and having like the freedom and doing like entirely my own groceries without having to think about anyone else. So I've been eating a lot of, um, I don't know, uh, you guys wouldn't have them, but we have in Australia a, a, a biscuit called a, a mint slice, which is like, okay. I love mint slices. It's like, it's like, I think, it, I think it's like, I, I think there's like a, a like a, a Girl Scout cookie that's like okay. very much vain, but it's like chocolate coated and like a mint, Ooh. like, Okay, and, okay. and I've been like eating too many of those because there's nobody here to judge me. <laughs> oh my god, they're addictive though. Like you yeah. can't. They're like a they're like a mixture between like a an after dinner min and like your childhood favorite biscuit. The cook or cookie, like yeah. Yeah, I I'm I'm a dumb American that doesn't know what a biscuit. Oh, I kind of like yeah. biscuit in America is completely different. If you ask for a biscuit here, they're gonna give you like this, like, yeah, like a, they're gonna give you like this, like sandwich type roll kind of thing, where yeah. it's like a savory scone. It seems. A, yeah. Yeah. Here is got it. Yeah. Knows. I've never been to the U.S. and ah. yeah. I have no idea. I, yeah. I'd love to go one day though. I would love I'll to go to Australia. Yes. yes. You guys yes. have you guys have some crazy shit. Like uh I was talking to Mac of Everline shout outs, uh, and she told me that we would have to try kangaroo steak when I go down there. And I said, Are you oh, are you yeah, fucking crazy? Yeah. I'm gonna have to eat kangaroo. And she's like, Oh yeah, definitely. You gotta try it. <laughs> They and breed then... like rodents. It's <laughs> and it's, I think I think it's actually supposed to be more environmentally friendly than like than like cattle. And it's wow, also, meat. yeah. It's also more protein, so there's less fat. So like there's, yes, it's, it's lean. very lean, yeah. very lean meat. Yeah, yeah. And then beetroot. They they had like, and I was like, yeah. I you what you put beets on your burger? There, I have so many questions about yeah. Australia. You, you have you have it in a salad. Yeah, yeah I do. We do have it in salads here, but I feel like yeah. I don't know. I'll have to do it. I'll have to try it once. I'm gonna have to try all of these. I keep telling myself that I'm gonna do it. Now I'm gonna have to just have a stream where I just like am streaming myself from my phone and I'm just cooking some of Australia's finest meals. So if you can give me a good suggestion in the comments, if you're from Australia more specifically, let me know what I should do. Um, I have a few that I already have in mind, but if you got some good ones that you think I should try, let me know. Uh, also, if somebody wants to send me a box of Tim Tams, uh, that would be amazing because they were delicious and, uh, so good. shout outs, Tim Tams good. shout outs to the homie Max. Uh, he used to be in this band called Vault of Valor over in Australia. And he sent me, to, he sent me like a care package of like merch and like mm. all that sort of stuff and he sent me this koala bear which i can't find but it's holding the australian flag and it's adorable oh, so i'm gonna have to go cute. look for it and put it in my room somewhere <laughs> but uh have you, did you get vegemite in that care package he did not he he's he, care package should always have vegemite in it yes <laughs> i'm gonna have to go yeah. find it so i'm gonna go look around and see if somebody sells it here yeah. locally because i've heard mixed I've heard mixed results right. on right. Veggie. See, 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 the, the issue is the issue <laughs> is that whenever Americans eat Vegemite, they always put it on like it's Nutella. You don't yeah. eat it like Nutella. You want like okay. you want like double the amount of like butter on your toast to to Vegemite. You do okay. like a solid butter, a little bit of Vegemite, just a little, and then you want to like just, you want to sprinkle it. You want to like thin layer. I always used to 
like trick my friends. So I would be in Spain and every year our grandmother would send us an Aussie care package because we wouldn't get like Tim Tams and all that oh. stuff here. So she would always be like the tubes of Vegemite. Like it almost looked like what astronauts would have. <laughs> it was just like two. And I'd always be like every every time after Christmas, I'd be like to my friends, I'm like, oh, you should try this Australian thing. Like it's so good. It's like Nutella. And then was just oh, like, no. in my kitchen, oh. like, it's oh, so, so salty. Funny. Yeah, it's salty. And then when it's yeah, I, I I probably shouldn't have done that because never ever. You probably never, shouldn't. Have. <laughs> they were like, "We're never doing that again." They're gonna have. They're gonna have like PTSD now. Just they're gonna every time they see Vegemite, they're gonna have fla- like war flashbacks of like, oh, no, not again. Not this. Not like the salty, savory. Whatever this is, you know. Oh my god! I mean, oh. Even when I have given it to them as like saying what it is, just be like, it's very salty. It's like not a like. Yeah. Even when they're still like, no, I don't know if I like this like situation. It's like it's like yeast extract. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's really good for you. It actually is. It's like vitamin B twelve. It's good for the brain power. Which I mean, in Australia, with the amount that we drink probably need it we need that, um, we need that. We need to bring back the brain cell capacity <laughs> maybe that's why they invented it they're just like listen we need to counteract we drink a lot so maybe we need something that kicks the brain in a little bit more so i don't know i'm straight edge so i don't i don't i would not go to australia to drink but i would go to australia just because i would love to go to australia so that's fine. It's, many... it's more it's more expensive here anyway it's <laughs> I gotta go see the homies. That's what I'm spending the money yeah. on. Seeing the homies. That's what I want to do. Um, oh yeah. Is I feel like every time that I ask this, I'm gonna get flamed a little bit. But like everybody, I feel like has a specific territory of Australia that they're just like, listen, we're gonna die on this hill. This is the best place to visit. Is is Melbourne the best place to visit? Yes. No question. <laughs> I don't know. I think it depends. Like some some people like when when people from overseas come to Australia, they have like kangaroos, dangerous animals, and like beautiful beaches in mind. None of that here. <laughs> none of that, like none of that in Melbourne. It's not here. Like you know, I'm gonna walk out of the airport and see a bunch of kangaroos. Like that's not how it works. I would um, hope not. That would seem so, super dangerous. <laughs> Oh, no. no not even i mean they're not they're not dangerous unless you go like to yeah unless you pick a fight yeah i'm not trying yeah, to do that yeah off, definitely not. Like angry energy yeah um but yeah it's not like that and a, a lot of people also think oh beach and then they go to the beach in melbourne and it's disgusting it's like going to the beach at barcelona or going to the beach like in the city it's not yeah it was like yeah it just depends on what you want or what you're looking for like if that's what you're looking for yeah go like to queensland or go like the western coast like there's yeah there's so many better places for that or like if you want to see a desert you got that here too but not in melbourne, not <laughs> melbourne. Um, so yeah it just depends on on what person likes to see when they're traveling i'd say like yeah if you, but, yeah, if, if you want to if you want to see afl football or mm-hmm. if you want to if you want to see bands we've got like a melbourne's like the, the kind of the, the cultural like yeah. center like you, you yeah okay. if you yeah if you want to see like cool sports stuff if you want to see music come to melbourne yeah. but yeah if you want to see the sydney harbour bridge we ain't got shit like that. <laughs> yeah i'm just trying it's to like, see yeah. i'm trying to see all the australian bands all the homies i feel like that if if i was to, yeah. if i was to know that i was coming to australia i would imagine all of my australian friends that i've met over the years would try to like put a show together so i can come visit oh. and hang out so that's Thank what i'm fully expecting yeah. please wherever is the closest hub to everyone i can't put all of you in one group chat i'm sure so <laughs> figure it out i think it's gonna be in the it's gotta be in the good spot where everybody can come hang out but i feel like every time that i ask australians about certain things it's like man it's like a team allegiance thing where they're just like 
no, this is the best place to visit. And then, like, I'll have some people from, like, Adelaide and be like, this is the best place to visit. And then I'll have some <laughs> Sydney people be like, this is the best place to visit. I'm like, which one is it? So. But I think the other good thing about Australian bands is there's only a few cities that you could tour to as well. So, like, we've yeah. been to all the places. We know what it's like. <laughs> we, we, st- we still stay in Melbourne. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think Adelaide is every every single place has a different vibe. Yeah, like, that's true. I like I know I don't I don't like Sydney. I'm gonna be honest. Don't like it. Don't wow, like you were throwing all. all the hot takes out tonight. <laughs> no, no, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it there. It's just like no, it's just too busy. Traffic's terrible. Um, I mean, yeah, the few venues, good venues out there. It's like Sydney's like just trying to shut down live music as uh-huh. much as they can. Uh, but yeah, the, the government, they're, they're like, they're putting like, curfews that are earlier yeah. than everyone else. They, like, they, they don't want to really, yeah. It yeah, sucks. It's, 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 the it's bands just, there, amazing. Bands that come out of Sydney, yeah. so good. But it's like, yeah. yeah, the city itself is like trying to shut it down. So they all come to Melbourne to play. Like, <laughs> That's how they, they know. They know what's up. Um, I, yeah, I had Monica on and she said the same thing. So I was like, oh, that sucks. Well, now I got to go to Melbourne now. So guys, let's do it. 20 some year. I'm going to insert year here of when I'm going to come to Australia. I have, that's a large plane ticket to pay for. So, (laughs) and not a lot of vacation time. So you have accommodation in Melbourne. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. we'll, 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 we'll figure something uh, out. You'll, you'll be able to go somewhere. There we go. I love that. Well, guys, the next question I have for you is if you guys could pick somebody to collaborate with on an up-and-coming future static song, who would you love to work with? This is a two-parter. First answer is one that is, you know, more feasible, wink-wink nudge nudge you know you guys are friends you know you haven't asked a question but now is the time to like maybe like you know maybe ask a question now you know in a nice way and then the other one's the the manifestation the one that we're like that i i gotta focus on my good energy towards Mm. i think that the manifestation one like would would almost definitely be courtney from spirit box like that would be the ultimate dream that'd be wild um yeah oh, I don't know I feel like if I was gonna like work with an artist I'd want to do yeah, some someone that's like entirely not metal I mean okay. like I'd be like hey Taylor Swift do you want to write a song together and make it like half heavy half or something like that do you know what I mean that would be like wild or you know Beyonce fucking send it like let's go i'll do some screamy stuff she can do it like oh, I, yeah if, if spirit box can do a, a remix of, of a yeah, yeah, song, yeah. Then, like <laughs> exactly one, one they, they know what's up like spirit yeah. box knew what's up like megan the stallion is incredible i very recently got on the <laughs> megan the stallion train and it like yeah it's <laughs> absolutely <sick laughs> <me>. so <laughs> Sorry, he knew he, he was like i love making the stallion too <laughs> I love it. yeah i know right <laughs> um but yeah i recently go, oh hey douglas sorry <laughs> right there oh <laughs> my god <laughs> what a cutie yeah um but yeah it would be it would be pretty amazing to do something yeah of the sort like with someone that's not metal at all i think something something we, more we could, would be if we if we do a gaga cover <laughs> and get ourselves in front of her Oh my god, I would I would die happy after if, if I got to do a song with Lady Gaga. I feel um, like I feel like she'd be game too because she's she's yeah, like jumping yeah. out of every like I think I think if we we put a heavy song in front of her she she'd vibe it. No, oh, she would. Yeah, I would, yeah, absolutely. That would be that's definitely a manifestation thing right there. Uh, what would be sort of like yeah something more achievable? I don't um, know. I have I have a really hard thing where it's like everybody in the metal scene is achievable to me now. I'm like, nah, we could do that. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would love to. So high. <laughs> I would. I would love to hear you singing with with Jenna with Jenna McDougal. Um, I would love that. I think that would be that would beautiful. Be no, that would be awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. The stuff that she's doing right now is like pretty amazing that's almost like a manifestation thing i'm just like yeah this might be a bit too yeah a bit too much but yeah it'd be awesome who else yeah i don't know 
Yeah. Well, yeah. because we, 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 we've already got like a very solid one. Again, like now the album's out, we can, when, when this is being posted, we can talk about it. Um, <laughs> the, we're, we're dropping with the album another like semi single, um, Plated mm -hmm. Gold, which is featuring Sean from Make Them Suffer. And that was yeah. incredible. Yeah. That was really That's good. That's really special. Yeah, that one's I'm I'm stoked to have him on there. Like it it would be it would be awesome to do something with him on a more collaborative level as well. Like it kind of like that was something that I wrote and then I just and we got him to to like perform it, which is really cool. But I'd almost love to do something with Make Them Suffer where we actually write something yeah. together. Like a collaborative, I think really yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be sick. Shout out to Sean. I met him uh, a couple yeah. years ago. Uh, I interviewed him out in behind uh, TLA in Philadelphia, and oh, uh, yeah. we bonded so over Magic the Gathering. So I'm about oh. it. Man's man's doing oh, yeah. the doing the Lord's work out here. So, and they're playing with Bring Me the Horizon, which is amazing. So yeah. I'm super pumped. So cool. Huge. So big ups to them. But guys, listen. First, what you have to do is you have to follow Future Static on Instagram, which if you haven't done that yet, I don't know why you're still here. You should do that and then come back. And then what I need you to do is I need you to tag Future Static. I need you to tag Lady Gaga, Spirit Box. Uh, who else did we throw in this in this ring here? Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yes. Taylor Swift. <laughs> who, who else who was it beyonce all right let's do it all the ladies all the ladies yeah. pull up for this one i need you to tag all of them okay i need you to type the word collab question mark and then just full send it you know full send it on your story full send it on your profile on facebook full send it anywhere on a piece of paper that you mail out to some random person do it just just full send it and then, you know, I've been on the internet long enough. So, you know, I feel like it's it's probably real, right? I mean, I feel it like can't it, hurt. it can't it hurt. Can't, it, it can't hurt. You know, so do it up. Uh, I'm going to hear the craziest collaboration track I've ever heard in my entire life uh, in like insert year, you know? So I feel like that'd be kind of tight. I feel like if you guys wind up getting someone out of that list, I feel like it would it would be really sick if it was like Courtney and Lady Gaga together. I think that would be yeah. monstrous. That would be huge. Like that, that would be, be that would be on the same level as the Megan Thee Stallion collab, which is wild in and of itself. So I don't know. They'd be cooking. They'd be cooking for sure. So if you want to make that happen, do it up. But the next question I have for you ladies is if there was a song that you wish that you wrote, what song would it be? Oh, there's plenty. <laughs> there's a yeah. lot of them. Oh. You can give me two picks because I'm feeling I'm feeling good tonight. So I, you know, I want to keep the positive energy going. Um, I'm 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 a very big um, Hosea fan, and his most recent album just came out, and the the whole thing's like very very beautiful and intricate, and it's like kind of exploring um dante's inferno and yep. all the circles of hell and everything um but there's this one song that's um it's called francesca and it's like it's, it's just like this very like beautiful painful love story of like like if if like our love meant that i got sent to hell i love you so much that i would like do it again oh and just like the the, the instrumental is stunning it's like all of all of that combined it's oh. like oh god like, if i could ever do anything half as beautiful as that i would be happy it's so good i'm not crying mm -hmm. i'm not crying now <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. Actually, I think in that time, I, I I managed to think of one. I Billie Eilish. Um, uh, everything I wanted. Ooh. Something about that vocal melody is just it's just so perfect on its own. Like it's like I I love writing like playing guitar to write songs and stuff like that i'm not amazing but i'm good enough like i can edit it really well so it sounds like i'm good um you're just so, a virtual like, so and we don't know yeah, it but, yeah. yeah but there's something about like when you find like a vocal melody that is just so powerful like with a chord like a chord progression obviously but just not the instrumental itself it's just like where the vocal melody sits in that chord progression and is just so special to me like the way it makes me feel and the fact that it's about like her brother as well and like how Aww. he's like always protected her. and it just like it just yeah it makes me feel a lot of things like i have a younger brother and he's kind of always been like an older brother he's just a bit more responsible than i am he's like the <laughs> creative one very like 
So it just like really hit me in a special spot. I was like, man, I wish I wrote that. Yeah, like it's it's amazing. That's yeah. you guys had some great picks. Now I'm gonna go cry after I throw those on. You know, I'm gonna get the the tears welled up and just just go for it. Um, if you are familiar with the channel, you already know I can do that. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Uh, so I've definitely done that live and not in specific videos that I'm totally not going to mention. So check those out. Um, but I, yeah, I, I really feel like you guys and getting back to what you guys write, like I was genuinely sh like shocked at some of like the melodies. I was like the way that uh, you two line up so well is like insane to me. And I was like, I was like, man, the melodies are so, like, crisp. And then also on top of that, like, the way that both of you have, like, a specific, like, tonality to your voice. Like, you can really tell there's a lot of, like, texture and, like, there's a lot of difference. And I just love the fact that it's so distinct in that way that, like, that was what really, like, surprised me the most. I mean, on top of breakdowns, I feel like breakdowns will always surprise me in some mm -hmm. way. But I felt like your vocal melodies, like... And even some parts, like, I felt like the hourglass in that, like, bridge section where it was very, like, ethereal and really, like, beautiful. I was like, I was like, there is so much going on here in just this spot. And I was like, I feel, I feel like I'm disrespecting this song by, like, just, like, listening through and talking over it because I was, like, so enamored by it. But I also was, like, it was, like, foot to mouth kind of a thing where I was like, I have to say this because I, like, want to say it. But I'm also, like, I don't want to say it because I want to listen to this part. So I just decided to talk instead. Um, and I I was like, wow, the, the layering going on vocally in that part was like super beautiful. And the way that your producer went about like kind of putting those layers in and really making it feel like full and like ambient. Uh, I was genuinely shocked at like some of that stuff. And I was like, I hope they really kind of incorporate that more. And as the singles went on, I was like, Roach Queen is like probably the one that I would say incorporates it the least, but maybe in a more distinct way, I guess, per se. Like, I don't feel like it's as direct, um, but I still love the way it was kind of like put together. And then um, the Chemical by Me, like, I felt like that one was the one where I was like, okay, they found that good middle ground of everything where it's like all the vocals hit in different spots, like my like ears were like popping off like i was like oh this part's really cool and i was like i heard some like really cool like layering at the end of the song which was like probably arguably my favorite part of the song was like the way that you guys end it and just have everything just like everything kind of cuts out and it's just you two like in at the end and i was like fuck this is this is wild i like sat there for like a second and i was like this is so crazy so i love it I'm, so I'm sorry. Oh I, I can I can I make you blush even more? Because like that's like one of my favorite things about working with Amy is like she'll come back in with oh. a song and it won't just be like the beautiful melody. It'll be like ten layers of harmonies and it's never the harmonies that you expect. Like it's not just like a third and a fifth and like leave it at that. It's like all these intricate like playing yeah. around with each other and like they're just oh so stunning and like oh, so cool. It changes the song entirely. Like sometimes, yeah. like I'll grab the melody and I'm like, "This is boring." I <laughs> need <laughs> <laughs> like more going on. It's like it has to happen. And uh, you know, a few times I've actually written a song where, um, like I'll do the harmony and I'm like, "Oh shit, that's better than the main mix." I'm gonna change the volumes and then like that turns into the main vocal instead. Like that's happened a few times. Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes the harmonies. Uh, more in interesting than the main vocal but I feel like yeah it's it's good and I'm so glad to have Kira to sing them honestly like so it's so good like it, your voice just fits so well with mine I feel like yeah, they, yeah. We kind of, yeah we've got we've got like a, it's an enough difference to make it like interesting that I'm singing instead of just having like two Amis but also like similar enough that we like we blend really nicely it's just like it's worked out so well it's so, yeah it's honestly perfect like I was just like as soon as like sometimes I wrote all these and I'm like how am I gonna do all these different vocals and I was like I have Kira thank goodness oh and I think yeah Kira's uh, vocal type is alto yeah which is like the less female voice mine's a soprano the highest and I so it like works really well like oh so, yeah our most powerful parts are different like parts of the scale 
So yeah, we kind of like like line up a bit in yeah. the middle, but we've got that, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's also amazing that you can go so high as well. Like Kira's like got the most incredible range. So it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll just throw any harmony at her. And I'm like, can you do this? The higher, like, lower, whatever. And she's just like, on it. Oh, <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> yeah i think yeah i and you guys nailed it i think it was like to me there was such a cool distinction between you know ami and kira's voice where i was like okay you could tell there's two different vocalists but in some spots it's like the way that it's layered and the way it's put together it's like wow that it sounds like it's just one large voice which is so sick but then it's so cool because then you'll split it and like you'll hear like the high stuff that Ami does and then you hear like kind of like the alto stuff that like Kira does and you're like holy shit there's like so much depth in in and of that and then you're hearing like some crazy like guitar and like bass and drum work <laughs> and like that's again that fully surprises why like my brain hurt because I was like there was so many cool like textural elements that I was just like so pumped and I was like as soon as I messaged Taryn, I was like, please, I need to have Future Stag gone, please. I need to, like, this is a must. This is a must. Like, this band needs to be on the show. I need to have them on. I don't know what I have to do. If I have to wake up at 2 a.m. my time, I'll do it. You know, like, uh, so I, I was stoked. And, again, Liminality, I am stoked to to check that out and really give it a listen so you guys can pre-order it down below be like me and, and buy it so you can support yes, them please. um but the next questions i have for you ladies is if you were to compile a dream tour lineup including future static who would be on this mm. list it's four bands plus you so five bands total five bands stacked okay. lineup yeah we're going hard you know Oof. this is a mini festival basically mini festival um, yeah <laughs> um Mm. what was I mean we we had one before it was like we chose oh was it bring me the horizon and spirit box it was like a three yeah like, yeah we, we, we basically yeah and then have, yeah spirit box and bring me the horizon but who else could we put on there like oh. so many things that I want to play with it's impossible I think I, I I think like just just for just because like we have to because like, like we we got the comparison when we started but we kind of figured that it was just like the the like oh every band with a female every female front of band sounds like paramore but like i would love to play with paramore like i would yeah, kill yeah, play with paramore. Be so good. But, like, yeah then they can really compare it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really see we're, we're very different from paramore we love them but yes like, yeah not every band with a female singer yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, who else? Mm. Oh man, it's hard to think like on the spot, isn't it? I need to get better at like using my brain during interviews. <laughs> yeah, they eat the, yeah, yeah, I, I always just go for like the first choice. That, just start that eating up the Vegemite. I think about it later. Just get yeah. the Vegemite um, going right now, you know? It'll just start, it'll just start yeah, kicking in. Right. Yeah, I need some of that. I just have like a bunch of hummus, so my stomach's <laughs> really nice and full right now. Um, Actually, just, just like on a on a personal level not even just like big dream bands or whatever but just like because we love them our, our friends in terror their, their band yeah. recently oh. recently ended and we only got to play like we, we did a, a little road trip with them at the start of the year to play a show in adelaide as like i would i would give anything to just do a full tour with them in a bus yeah. fucking around them and the last murder i would yeah. love to tour with the last murder i think that would so be much amazing fun. so good um Oh, who else would be good on a lineup? Brrr. I mean, I think I I really am excited to play with Tesseract. <laughs> that would be an amazing, amazing time. Mm. I really hope I hope we one day get to do that. that that's, be, yeah, that's always a bucket list one. Like, I mean, Dan's voice is just insane. Oh, like, yeah. you can't get any better than that. Like the control, like the control. Like that would be good to have on the lineup as well as Spirit Box. Um. <laughs> Yes. Who else? Be good. Mm. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. I'm like, trying to fight between know. like who, who who would I personally want and who would actually fit with a future static thing because like oh, yeah. that's why it's a I'll dream. I just what you personally want. What because we can make it work. Like, <laughs> yeah, we we've got a, we've got a breadth. We can we, we can mer- do whatever. Yeah. Just merge merge shows. You know, you guys are just gonna have like day one, day two. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, mixed bill. I love it. I love it. This is this yeah. is you got some great picks for sure. Uh I I feel like I cringed a little bit when you guys said like, Oh my god, we've gotten compared to Paramore. I was like, Huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean like there's definitely more in the in the early days where we learned a bit more pop punk, but like you, you always kind of get it. And it's like, yeah, that's a, absolutely a massive compliment, but also are we listening to the same music? It's like, it's just one of those things where it's become not a compliment just because- I was going to say, yeah. It sucks. It's like, I it's love it. Just, yeah, it's like, you're not actually comparing us to how good Paramore are. You're just saying because there's a female vocalist in front of yeah. guitar, but we sound the same. And it, um, and it clearly Christian. also means that that person doesn't listen to- alternative music with women fronting it because there's other bands like if that's your only comparison point then yeah. like what 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 effort are you putting into yeah, support yeah, oh my I god did, I, did have, um, I did have someone say once that it was the nostalgia like i sent one of my friends um who i grew up with in spain he now lives in colombia i sent him waves when we first released it or like before like right before we released it i was like can listen to this and he compared it to paramore and i cracked the shit so i was like what the fuck do you mean bro? like what do you mean <laughs> And he actually said a really cool thing. He was like, it gives me that nostalgic feeling mm. of like that time in his life, like the heavy, uh, like, yeah. like, well, heavy, like, that. like, like, floor, like, yeah, like kind of mid, like 2000, and, yeah, mid 2000s, 2010 metalcore vibe. And I was like, okay, I see what you mean. I don't know how, like, it was just that era of music with yeah. Paramore involved, like, yeah, and like Escape the Fate, <laughs> like all of that, all of those kind of bands. It's like I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I get that. That's a much nicer way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> but I cracked it at him because I was like, nah, bro. What do you mean we sound like caramel? And he's like, no, that's the feeling it gives me. And I was like, uh, okay, yeah. That's I, I feel like you probably should lead off with that, not just be because yeah. I feel like yeah. it, again, I would never. I would never say that, even if I feel like they're in the yeah. same like lane. I would wouldn't yeah. even that wouldn't even cross my mind. <laughs> like I wouldn't be like, yeah. oh yeah, you guys. Unless like they cover Paramore, then I'm like, okay, well, you know, I feel like you're just like yeah. now you're just playing with the trope here. So I'm just gonna like that's fine. Yeah. But I think if you like if you guys were to listen to Future Static, people that are watching this listen to Future Static, I would hope that Paramore would not be the first band you would think of. Unless you don't know anything about this scene, then I don't know why you're here, because normally I cover that stuff. Or if you're, like, <laughs> into K-pop music, then that's the only way you'd be showing up here. Otherwise, I don't get it, you know? So, but I, yeah, I I feel like from my perspective, I don't, I don't understand how people can kind of put it to that way. But again, I've been in the scene for like since 2011 or something like that. So, I mean, I've been around the block for a little bit. So I feel like for me, I would never make that type of comment. Uh, but I feel like for people who maybe are new, that might, you know, depending upon how it's worded, may not be as bad. But don't, if you see a female fronted band and you say they sound like Paramore, just don't. If just fight the internal urge to not say that, you we will be so much better off if you just yeah. don't say that. So yeah, PSA. And, and that's that's out of respect to the band you're talking to and Paramore. Yeah, like show that you actually know show what the, they sound like. Show the queen some respect. All right, she, she, she's the queen for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> show the queen some respect. You know, I I would love to interview Paramore. So Paramore, yeah, mm -hmm. please. I would actually like. I know I keep saying that I would cry, but for real, I would actually cry on multiple occasions. <laughs> I if I got an email saying like, wow, Haley watched this one video that you did with Future Static, and now they're huge, and they're like, so she was really stoked, and she would love to know if you would love to interview her, and I would just like, die. <laughs> and then I'd say, uh -oh. then I'd say, well, my only condition would be is if Haley Williams did a song with Future Static, and then they'd be like, okay, bet, we got you. So there we go. That's my that's my dealer's card, guys. I got you. I got you. Add it to the song with Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Listen, I'm putting Future Static on my back right now. You know, if I had, if, you know, if I have the opportunity to ask for it, I'm going to do it, you know? So I got these ladies. I got these ladies. Um, the next question I have for you is favorite TV show, favorite movie. What's your go-to? Oh, 
I'll let you take this one because you're more of a movie person. Right. See, that's the problem is because I'm a very much a TV <laughs> and movie person, there's too many options. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll probably, I'll try to say something, let you think of the millions of movies. Uh, Thank you. Well, um, I think I recently watched, I'm, I really like, like, psychological thriller sci-fi is my favourite kind of genre, so, like, Annihilation is probably one of my favorites. It's just like, oh man, like it, it's really good. I, I probably should read the book as well just to really grasp what happens. But it, yeah, the, the, just like the aesthetic of that movie, it's so gorily beautiful. Um, and that's something I really like. Um, and I also like Arrival. Like, just oh, the, nice. Yeah. The concept of, of, yeah, like learning a language, changing how your brain works. I am be, being a bilingual person. I truly believe that because I, I do have like slight personality shifts when I speak Spanish to when I speak English. It's actually quite weird and wild that it happens. Like the way I feel is different. Like it, it's almost like so. It, it, it to me, it could make sense. Like to, that, there would be a language out there that if you learned it, you could see, you could just see your whole life not in like a time like it's just a chronological order yeah, type yeah. thing like it could be yeah I, I like it's a really interesting concept and I'm glad that they made such a good movie about it and the acting's just brilliant as well and it's just like uh yeah yeah those are probably my two favorite um yeah movies and and series um I'm re-watching The Haunting of Hill House again that one is, yeah yes. so good. um yeah and Sense 8 Mm, I hmm. love Senso. Yeah, okay. I've just started, I haven't finished it yet. Um, yeah, I also really love dumb comedy. So I think you should leave and yes. um, it's always funny in Philadelphia. Yeah. At the moment, I'm like thrashing those when I feel a bit silly, which is most yeah. of the time. Yeah, um, same. Yeah. 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 Future static yeah. Easter egg. We, the Instagram only follows one person and it's Tim Robinson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you go, yeah, so guys, if you go. Yeah, if you go to our Instagram, the only person we follow is is Tim Robinson. Um, we just so, need, yeah, another, we just need senpai it. Tim Robinson to notice you now. Oh yeah. my god, you know, it would be amazing. Tim Robinson, like, come on, man, what are you doing? I don't know. He doesn't post that much, like a because because the story bubbles are always like there's only one person. He's like, he's almost never there. Like he doesn't post a hell of a lot. Uh, so um, maybe he's yeah. waiting to listen to Future Static. You know. Oh, no. oh, collab with Tim Robinson. <laughs> oh, I mean, we have we can uh, do the uh, breakdown call out. We'll get him to say something yes. really. Yeah, because yeah. another another future static Easter egg is we have one sample on the Fatalist EP, and that's a Gordon Ramsay sample. So if we yeah. got a Tim Robinson sample in there, mm. what was the what was the Gordon Ramsay <laughs> sample? I love Gordon um, Ramsay. Shout out, Kitchen Nightmares is my favorite. <laughs> It's is it never never miss? I think yeah, it's, it's never miss, and he says I'll never miss dickheads. <laughs> and one of, one of one of my favorite reviews was a, a mate of ours um, did did a did a, a review of the of the the Fatalist EP when it came out, and he he was like for that song I don't know what's going on, but I think someone called me a dickhead at one point. It's like yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we didn't put any samples. In no, this we were we, we were going to, but we ended Aww. up pulling it. I think because yeah, the, the moment needed it to to breathe. We were gonna put another Gordon Ramsay sample in earlier. Yeah. That was gonna be. We're gonna continue you should, the. Yeah, you should have put. What are you, an idiot sample? <laughs> that would have been a good one. Or it's raw. That would have been. I would have. I would have been. Oh, it's raw. <laughs> it's raw. It's raw. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, the next one. That, thank you, yeah. thank you. I'm already gonna say thank you in advance because I know it's gonna happen. So, uh, oh, yeah. 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 next we'll do like a standalone single just for you, and it'll come. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like, I'll come back, and I'll be like, the the ladies did it. They did it for me. I'm all. I can quit. I can quit YouTube now. I'm. I've done it. I've made it. Let's yeah, go. This, this, this. Yeah, your entire internet career was leading up to that moment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some random Australian band made a song with the yeah. I would hey, listen, if that was my career ending moment, I would be about it, you know? I'd be like, I asked a band to do this thing and they did it nicely and we're here. You know? That's amazing. So 
I mean, I have more bucket list things, but I feel like that would definitely be on on the list. You know, to be up there. Any bucket list item should like be something that would enhance your career, not like end it. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing that makes you go like to all of the festivals and come to Australia. Like that's the one I want to hear that. Not that it's going to end your career. (laughs) Not that you're done. I'll never end this. I feel like I'm gonna be. I feel like I'm gonna be like have a family and kids, and I'm still gonna be doing this. I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna be like, hey, son, what do you think about this song? And he's gonna be like, I heard screaming, and I'm like, you're damn right. You just hear your son in the background. <laughs> <laughs> that's my. That's my cat. That's my cat. Sometimes he's not in here, but normally he is like r- parked right next to me. He knows when I finish for whatever reason, so he will come. He will specifically kick the door open into my room and then start just talking to me. So he he's a nut job. It must be like yeah, they must send something. Maybe it's like a certain amount of silence. Like when it, <laughs> like how long you you don't talk for, and then he's like, oh, he's done. Oh, he's done. Yeah, I can come in here. Done. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you stay quiet for like five minutes, do you think he'll come up and do it? I'll come. Fi- I'll go get him for you. I'll I'll come. I'll I'll leave the call open and I'll pull Meatball out oh, of his God. his slumber. <laughs> well, my roommate also has a cat. Uh, shout out oh. to my roommate Alex. Uh, he has a cat and it's named Milk, so it's Milk and Meatball. Oh, Milk and me- oh. I just take not a good, not a good combo, not a good combo. Yeah, oh, good, good combo of cat, good combo of cat, but not good combo of like you should eat this. Definitely not. Would not recommend. Doesn't sound good. Zero out of ten. No. Um, Zero but I think. I think we've given Kira enough time to to stall. So oh uh, oh now no. Kira is gonna give us give us the goods. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm a very, very big sci-fi nerd. I always have been. Um, I grew up like mostly with like a lot of Doctor Who, and Doctor Who was nearly uh-huh. my answer. Love that show. But I've been recently rewatching to show my younger sibling because they didn't watch it when it came out. Um, Orphan Black. Oh, I love that one. Good. And you it's just so like, you, you genuinely forget that it's one yes. actress doing like all of yeah, these characters. It's, she's, Tatiana Maslany is truly incredible so so good um and then for the movie i really struggled because it's like it's it's so easy to say like a wanker answer of like shawshank redemption (laughs) or something like that but genuinely i think the movie that i've re-watched the most in recent years is um crazy stupid love you guys ever (laughs) seen it's 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 really it's really fun and it has this like twist that that's like so silly and obvious but like once you see it you're like ah 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 it just brings me joy showing that movie to other people so good that is that is a great movie i have seen that um i also feel like a lot of people when i ask this question because they're like oh what's your what's your favorite movie i am I'm a huge rom-com fan, which I don't yeah. feel like most people would attribute that to me or just guys in general. They're like, yeah, I don't watch an action movie. I love a good rom-com. I'm, I'm, I'm down for a good rom-com party. So, um, yeah. one of my favorites, I'd say like, uh, I love uh, 50 first dates. That's a, yeah, that's, that a, was a, one. that's a great one. Oh. I'm a huge anything with Adam Sandler. Anything like, Adam Sandler, yeah, yeah it, it's great. I also love like Mr. Deeds, which is another good one. Um, that, one that one, that one's a good one. I like that one. I probably could quote about half the movie now at this point, so I feel like that's that's up there. But yeah, you guys had some great picks. I love it. I haven't heard Orphan Black in quite a bit, but I that is such mm. a underrated TV it's show. Like, so there's, there's a new um. Spinoff coming out as well, starring um, Chris, Kristen Ritter, who was um, Jessica Jones, and she was in Breaking Bad as well. Oh, and yeah. it looks like they're like bringing back char- characters from the original. Like it's a separate story, but they're bringing back characters from the original show as well. So I'm really keen to see how that is. When's that coming out? Should, yeah, we should plan. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a watch party or something. I think the first step is coming out. Yeah, we, we might have to. Yeah, that sounds like a That'd move. Be so good. That'd be very sick. Well, the next question I have for you ladies is if you were trapped on a desert island for the next month and there was one album you could bring with you to listen to, what album would that be? Mmm. Fuck, that's a hard one. 
I, I think that 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 song Francesca that I was talking about before that that Hosier song I think that that entire album um they, Unreal they basically did that when we were trapped in Europe I yeah, think exactly. we stopped listening to oh, that album the whole time <laughs> there's so many there's so many layers and it's so intricate and like I, I think just like to have that month to just like explore that album would would like like I, I would just like do that in my bedroom anyway so I might as well be on an island <laughs> yeah Oh, I don't know. I, there's so many. There's so many, but there's this one album that just keeps coming back and it hasn't come back for a while because it was my, like, I'm depressed album and I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> Hell so yeah. Kind of, I can't it, but I know that, like, if I was stuck on an island with nobody, I would probably be quite melancholic and depressed. And it's an album by a band called Arcane Roots. They're no longer oh, a band. Yeah. Um, they're, they're from the UK. Um, I'm salty that I'll never get to, like, Actually, collaboration, dream collaboration would probably be with, like, yeah, them, but they don't exist anymore, which sucks. But, um, yeah, I'd probably listen to the album Melancholia Hymns. Um, oh, because yeah. Because it kind of like, it's like, yeah, like, whenever I'd, I'd have, like, a really bad depressive episode, it would just kind of, like, it would it takes you really down to the dark depths of, like, how depressed you can get. And then the last song is just so, like, it's just, like, brings it all out and it's just like it I'd always like cry at the end and then just feel like better like completely yeah better. So it's cathartic I've been stuck on an island by myself for a month I think that would have to be that would be the album to get me through it for sure <laughs> yeah. I I like how you guys pick like I, I I can't remember if Hosier's album is more on that like sad side of things but I wouldn't be surprised. So you guys are two peas in the pod, you know, with the <laughs> the depressive music, which I get because I feel like if I was on a desert island, I'd probably feel the same way. So uh, I, I, I I resonate with that. So, um, yeah. But the last question I have for you, um, if you guys enjoyed this interview, Future Stack will be able to tell you all about their stuff in just a moment. But I wanted to know, ladies, uh, had a great chat with you. Uh, love learning about your history and, and why you do it. So the final question I have for you is, you know, why is this important to you? Why is it, you know, why is it something you spend time, blood, sweat, tears, money into? Because I feel like as me as an interviewer, and I've said this countless of times in my interviews, but like, I feel like I have more of an appreciation for what artists do um, when I ask them this question, because I think for me, it's like, I know how much time I put into doing this, right? So I can imagine how much it is for like bands and touring and doing all this sort of stuff. So what does this mean to you? And, you know, obviously Liminality is an album that's going to be coming out. Well, it's out now. You can check it out. But, you know, what what is this whole culmination of everything for you guys? And why is it important for you? Oh, yeah. It's a big question. It's a big question. It's a big question. Yeah. Um, do you need to think about it <laughs> um actually no i think i can just kind of like start talking and it'll it'll come out naturally. <laughs> like word vomit I'll, you know i got you yeah I'll just word vomit. that's what i always do that's how i write my songs you know just word vomiting <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, i think um i think one of the most important things is because it's like uh, you know i i got lucky growing up with a family that was so supportive and so musical and I watched them put the hard work in and I watched them um, never have any money and have to do it and I watched them sacrifice everything for like us and music it was like music was like a sibling to me and my yeah. brother I guess and it's almost like something that it, I got that chance and so many other people like you know like fight so hard against people telling them they shouldn't do it or like you know and they still get to like super massive heights to do the one thing which is just resonate with people and connect and make them feel better and it's like I was like well if I don't do this it'd be stupid I have all the tools I was born with these tools my parents gave me the tools like I'd like if it, I have to do this like and you know what? And doing it with the people I'm doing it with as well makes it a lot easier. It's like a shared, like a shared dream. Yeah, I think I think the reason I do it is because me, yeah, music has helped me so much, and I want to be that for other people as well. Like I just 
I want to create something that helps people through their dark times, like that album Melancholia Hymns does for me, or like make make music that, yeah, makes people just feel a bit better. Like take something dark and make it uplifting. Positive, that's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably it. <laughs> There's my word moment for the day. <laughs> yeah. It was a good word moment. I'm, yeah, I think I'm the same too. I think it, it, it truly is like, all about connection like like I I grew up performing but not 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 as much music I grew up dancing and then kind of came into more music like when I got a bit older and like it is always about like I think and like any art is about connection it's about feeling seen and making other people feel seen and yeah I, I think that's kind of the most important thing and I think and and it is also about like the people I'm doing it with too like if if we hadn't like found this this particular combination um that we can like we can talk to each other and work with each other and be stuck in a van together and and collaborate and like support each other and and be brutally honest if we need to and all of that stuff together um made this music and made our live show um I don't I, like like maybe I could have I could still be doing music with other people but I can't see myself doing it um this this successfully like to the level that we've gotten to mm -hmm. and also just like this this happily I think I, I if I would have gotten like so much more frustrated or just like over it all because it is easy to get bitter like the music yeah. industry is hard okay. and expensive okay. and painful but like and if I was like a solo artist I don't see myself making it this far but I did it because of the, the people that I've got with me and because I believe in the music we're making and it's all it's all about it's all about teamwork it's all about working together and connecting with each other it's special it is yeah I also sure. I also think it's a, a special experience to experience music together right and I think that's kind of yeah. like what I gathered from both of your comments is that like for me like and I mentioned it earlier is just like this has always been a strong community to me and I imagine very similarly to you guys is that like you know when you don't feel accepted anywhere else and you go to music and that's where you want to feel accepted and like people are just like you're Brandon you're cool I like you you know what I mean <laughs> like there's something really yeah. special about it and I think for me as doing this for as long as I've been doing it for which is almost eight years which is pretty wild um like it's cool to just like, I've never met you guys before today. And so, like, I think it's cool that I get to experience this sort of, like, connection with other people that are making an impact in where they're at. And hopefully that it makes a larger impact elsewhere. Like, you know, obviously positive best affirmations for Future Static, even though I don't feel like I have to say much because you guys are cooking. But uh, I, I do feel like there is there is a level of, like, being able to just have that sort of shared experience and as Kira said the music industry is a very tough business to be in and if you aren't if you aren't like really struggling in some poor parts like it can it can definitely seem like a difficult challenge but I think what to me and I imagine similarly to you guys is that like that sense of community is always going to be a really large portion of why you guys do in you know why you want to be able to ex share that experience with other people so I appreciate that you are, you know, Future Static collectively is putting out this album because I'm so excited to check it out. Liminality. I said it right three times, which is pretty incredible yeah, for me because I, I fuck up everything. So, uh, that, so I'm glad I didn't do that, but ladies tell them where they can find Future Static at, what you have coming up in the next couple months and anything else you would like to share about the band that we didn't talk about. Um, we laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. So welcome to the club. <laughs> Which is the only reason why I would probably never fight. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, yeah, good to know. So, um, Liminality is available. Uh, yeah, 24th of November, it's coming out. You can get it as a CD or a vinyl. There's two different variations, two different um, variants, sorry. Um, and yes, it's on. going to be on Spotify, on iTunes, on all of the platforms as well. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you go on um, wildthingmusic.com, um, that's the, the, the music store has like yeah. the, it'll have the, 
the album, the vinyl, we've got like t-shirts and, and crop tops and, and jumpers yeah. and stuff. So there's there's all that stuff for the for the pre-order. Um, yeah. yeah. Very, very gender fluid for a genre fluid band. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, lots of, yeah, the crop tops, I'm so stoked to finally have them. I can't wait. Yes, yeah. I'm going to yes. rock a crop top, guys. Get ready. Yes. I'm doing yes. it. Yes. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to buy one of everything now. <laughs> Just like I'm gonna show up in my next interview in a crop top. Let's go. Yes. About that, about that oh, energy, yeah. baby. Let's go. Well, listen. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Shoot. No. Show, um, I was gonna say like yeah, all of the music videos are on YouTube as well. So yes, check them out. It really helps. Um, having the views on YouTube. That's like a massive thing, isn't it? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also just like super proud of them. We like like we yeah. we we're all like movie people we love making these these like yeah. short films so like that we, yeah, we put a really lot of love into them so i hope people see that is there a oh, story yeah. is there a storyline between the music videos or is there not like is there yeah. like is there a connection or i don't know if you want to spoil they, the details or not there's little easter eggs i guess yeah. like i mean you know uh, well this this album is basically about my life and my history and stuff because you know in lockdown you kind of get really stuck in your own head and you kind of just I was like what do I write about if I'm not having any experiences so I had to kind of look at past experiences um and I guess you know um chemical lobotomy is about uh indulging in bad habits including drinking and stuff um and I think uh you know I'm drinking like the the black stuff yeah uh, out of, yeah that is kind of like a maybe a prelude to venenosa. The black stuff kind of seeps out of my skin. It was like venenosa is about um, this time I something just felt off in the air and it was like, I don't know what was going on. I was just feeling really weird. People were acting weird around me and I realized that I was the problem um, and I was being real bitch to people for some reason and it, nobody kind of like told me. They just yeah. kind of like accepted it. it. Yeah. And, yeah, and I was like, well, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to make people feel bad. And I went off and had like this big realization, and then I had like a bit of a, a bit of a mushroom trip <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. Where I saw black stuff coming out of my skin, and um, holy shit, yeah. So venomous is about that. So it kind of like came from the drinking, probably, and the other, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of, yeah. So I guess they kind of are. A little bit connected, but not really. They're connected because they're kind of stories about my life. Ah. But the next album won't be like this, I promise. It'll be more like... I'm know, expecting like, rainbows, <laughs> sunshine, <laughs> happiness, you know. Oh, no, it'll probably still be dark, but it just won't be like... <laughs> won't be I'm trying to... Um, I mean, I'm <laughs> trying to give you positive affirmation here, okay? You know, I'm all about the positive... I'm PMA, baby. I'm positive mental attitude here. So I'm here to no, gas, well, you know, gas gonna, up the homies. Like, Seeing as we're going to be touring a lot, like I'm, I'm very excited for what that next album is going to be about. Like it's probably going to be definitely more positive and happy and fun, and yeah. I'm just going to DM. I'm going to DM Ami and Kira every day and be like, positive affirmations. Let's go, <laughs> positive train, baby. Let's rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do a major, a major scale breakdown. You know, like yeah, a happy yeah. Breakdown. Like an easy core. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. got it. I got you. I'm picking on what you're putting down. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank you. but love this uh if you have not listen i'm gonna get up close guys listen if you have not checked out future static right now you need to do that right, right now like we're at the end of the video so you have no excuse you need to do this this is a band that if you are not checking out they are going to be big next year. I'm calling it. I'm going to call it right now i've called it before i've called things before in my career of doing this and you know I don't want to say I've been. I don't want to say I've been wrong, but I've been. I've been right a lot of the time. So I'm. I'm, I'm putting the positive. Man. On our social media, so please go check it out. Please go <laughs> check. On <laughs> Chronically online, which is like me. But if you want to go check out Future Static, all of the links are in the description, along with pre-ordering the album. I always say this a ton, but first week sales are huge. So please, if you can go pick it up, go do it. That would be amazing. It would help this band out immensely. You already know I'm I'm pre-ordering this shit. I'm super excited to get my vinyl in the mail in 2032. So very stoked. Go check it out. Um, also, huge thanks to Taryn over at Hold Tight. 
he was the one who got this set up. So big love to Taryn. Um, and if you enjoyed this interview, share it, like, and subscribe. It goes a long way. I am well on my way to 4K subs. So, you know, if you can help me get there, that would be oh, insane. Like, oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, please subscribe if you haven't. And huge thanks to Ami and Kira for coming on tonight. Much love. Oh, thanks for having thank us. You. Yeah, it's been great. This is yeah, this has been a really fun interview. Yeah. Thank you.